grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to this online service on today, which is Bible Sunday, as we celebrate the centrality of the Bible, God's word, to our life and faith. I'm standing today in the Parr Chapel of Holy Trinity Church in Kendal. The Parr family built this chapel in the 14th century, and the family coat of arms is seen up there on the ceiling. Now, the Parr family's most famous member is Catherine Parr, the sixth and final wife of King Henry VIII, the one who survived as the little rhyme goes. There's a large tomb in the chapel, which is believed to be that of William Parr, Catherine's grandfather. And Catherine was a devout Christian who encouraged the reading of the Bible by everyone in English. The Bible translator, Miles Coverdale, was amongst her closest advisors. And unusually for a woman of her time, Catherine wrote and published two devotional books. In one, she wrote these words. I have hope nor confidence in any creature, neither in heaven or earth, but in Christ, my whole and only saviour. Today our service will be led by people from across the beautiful county of Cumbria and further afield who, like Catherine Parr, look to the Bible for the inspiration which leads them to hope in Christ, their Saviour. So let's pray together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, how sweet are your words to the taste, sweeter than honey to the mouth. How precious are your commands for our life, more than the finest gold in our hands. How marvellous is your will for the world, unending is your love for the nations. Our voices shall sing of your promises, and our lips declare your praise, for ever and ever. Amen. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. Your word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us, repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Maddie Simpson is a curate from the South Lakeland town of Ulverston. She was ordained as a priest a few weeks ago, and here she reflects on how, during lockdown, her reading of the Bible has brought close to her the great cloud of witnesses. Hello, my name is Maddie Simpson and I am the assistant curate at Ulverston Parish Church in the South Lakes in Cumbria. I've been asked today to share a brief reflection on how I read scripture or how my reading of scripture has changed during lockdown, uh, it being Bible Sunday. And I thought this was a really good question to ask because I've been reading the Bible for many, many years. So in some ways it's really familiar um, I know where my favourite bits are, um, so the content doesn't strike me as new sometimes, if I'm allowed to say that, although there are new things always to be discovered in it. But what has really come home to me uh, while reading it during lockdown is the company that I'm in when I read. What do I mean by that? Well, one of the worst things about lockdown is the feeling of being lonely, um, being isolated, 
Um, and that sense of loneliness and isolation can be modified or um, offset or cushioned somewhat by comforting ourselves behind locked doors. So we can read any number of novels, we can watch TV and um, we can text people and things like that. But it, it's so different to have somebody alive and with you uh, in the warm flesh. And the thing about the Bible is, or has come home to me, um, is that it's not just Jesus, the living word, who is with me, um, alive and, and resurrected in his flesh, but there is all the great company of heaven. And what I've loved to experience and just to reflect on um, frequently throughout the last six months is that everybody who's had a hand in compiling this, the authors in it, um, everybody whom Jesus brings alive uh, in his encounters with them in the stories in the Bible is alive now and they're so much on my side and I would love you to know that today as well that there is a vast company in heaven and here on earth a great company of believers a great company of people uh, whom Jesus has brought alive uh, who are very much not dead um, who are with you and uh, who are reading with you, who are singing God's praises alongside you and have you in their thoughts and prayers. Um, Jesus took some people to task in Luke chapter 20 for not believing this. And I think he wants us to remind, uh, to be reminded of that today. So God be with you and all the company of heaven. <laughs> Our first reading is brought to us by Dave Henley, who is a police officer with Cumbria Constabulary. Today's reading is taken from the letter of St Paul to the Colossians 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you almost must forgive. Above all, 
clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible is a directive and authoritative voice in my life, more like a manual or a sat nav. And it is going to be a source of hope and encouragement, especially in this a pandemic. When we first entered into lockdown, I would read my scripture and just being selective to what I listen to, listening in to that just one verse or one book that I felt was providing answers to the questions that I had. And when I wouldn't find those answers, it was like, is God still speaking <laughs> uh, through this book? But then the longer we stayed in lockdown, I also learned to take a step back. And instead of coming with my own questions, to also allow scripture to raise certain questions in me. And it meant allowing God through the Holy Spirit to direct me, to give me the hope, the encouragement that I needed and that I still need. It hasn't been easy, but it has been transformative. Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16. How shall young people cleanse their way to keep themselves according to your word? With my whole heart I have sought you. O oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart, that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. O oh, teach me your statutes, with my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is brought to us by Abby Lawson, and you may be able to hear some traffic noise behind her as she reads, but that's because Abby is from St James's Church in Bay, which is just on the side of the M6. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, verses 30 to 35. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and then they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Bible Sunday, when we give thanks for the Bible in the life of Christian faith. We commit to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest the scriptures, 
We pray for those who don't have access to the Bible in their own language or for whom owning and reading a Bible is an offence under the laws of the land in which they live. The Bible, the most read book in the whole of Christian history, deliberately excluded from the bestseller lists because it would skew the results. Actually, a collection of 66 different books written over 1,500 years, but with an incredible coherence from start to finish. Translated so far into 700 languages, 5.6 billion people have access to a Bible in their own language. And here I have a few Bibles that are special to me. This one is my family Welsh Bible. This one was given to me by the Archbishop of York on the day of my consecration as a bishop. This one was given to me by the Gideons at school as a teenager. I wonder what the Bible means to you. For some watching this today, maybe not very much. Perhaps a few nice words at Christmas, a really interesting piece of text, an important part of our cultural heritage, the inspiration for some of our great works of art and literature, Milton's Paradise Lost, Leonardo's Last Supper. For many of us, the Bible is that, but is so much more than that. It's the source and bedrock for all we believe and the means by which we come to know most clearly the saving love of God in Christ Jesus, truly the word of life. Now, I love words. Before I was ordained, I studied language and linguistics, and in one job I worked for a company that wrote dictionaries. I know, I really am that interesting. But when we're talking about the Bible, we are talking about words, of course, because that's what the Bible is, a collection of words. But we're talking about so much more than words on a page. The Word of God in the Bible points to the living Word of God, Jesus Christ, who we come to know through its pages. And every Sunday, and on other days too, throughout the world, whether in church buildings or online, the Word of God is preached, broken open, bringing to life the words on the page to fire and inspire the life of faith. So when we read the words of Paul to the Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's an encouragement to us to focus on, to ponder, to dwell upon the good news of Jesus Christ and for that to influence everything we do and everything we say. Let the word of Christ make its home in you. Make sure you're well stocked with the treasures of God's word. Make sure the riches of the word of Christ take up residence in your life. At times of great turbulence and uncertainty throughout the history of humankind, the Bible has provided a source of comfort, assurance and hope. Her Majesty the Queen once said in a speech, To what greater inspiration and counsel can we turn than to the imperishable truth to be found in this treasure house, the Bible? It's something Jesus pointed out to his own first followers when he was telling them about a time of great turbulence to come, when the temple in Jerusalem would be destroyed, that even when everything around us is crumbling, even though heaven and earth will pass away, my words will not pass away, says Jesus. God's word will continue through famine, war, pestilence, plague and pandemic. And I wonder if this is something we particularly need to hear today. So much of what we thought we knew and the things that we trusted to be there always have been upended or taken away by COVID. Hope is something that is in short supply at the moment. We'd hoped that we'd, we would be through this by Christmas. We had hoped that we might have a vaccine by now. We'd hoped that our lives might be getting back to normal. We'd hoped that the rates of infection would be falling and fewer people would be suffering physically, emotionally or economically. And even in these difficult times, especially in these difficult times, the Bible gives us hope because it shows us that God's big story and his ultimate plans for good are there for the whole created order. 
it gives us hope because we read in its pages that what we see and experience here and now is not all there is, and that God and his love and his goodness will ultimately prevail. As the evangelist Billy Graham once said, I've read the last page of the Bible and it's going to turn out all right. So this Bible Sunday, can I encourage you, wherever you start from with the Bible, to consider taking it the next step. If you've never read it before, consider starting. One of the Gospels is a good place to start. If you're sceptical about the Bible, give it another chance. If you're troubled by the way that the Bible has been used to oppress, continue to wrestle the truth from it. If you know and love the Bible and you follow the God you find revealed in its pages, most especially in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, keep reading, keep studying, keep loving it, keep letting it dwell with all its riches in your life day by day, with its transforming, hope-giving, life-affirming power. And if we all did that, wouldn't every Sunday be Bible Sunday? Let's pray together. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen.
Prayers will be led for us by the Mountain Pilgrims, a fresh expression of church in Carlisle Diocese, which meets and prays and reads the Bible on the mountains. Greetings from Cumbria. Um, ordinarily, as Mountain Pilgrims, our prayers are inspired by the natural world around us. We find that nature invites us to open ourselves up, allowing God to minister to us through nature. Um, and in return, we minister back to nature by honouring and respecting it. Uh, but this morning, uh, we're glad to join you, the Time Honoured Church, with some spoken prayers. As we pray together, we'll offer the line, Come breath from the four winds, and your response is, Breathe life into our prayers. And so, let us be still together, and notice once again that God is here, in us, around us, with us, and for us. We open our hearts and minds to you, God, and the world around us, and ask that you would teach us and inspire us to pray. Come breath from the four winds, breathe life into our prayers. We look at the world and see all that you have created. We thank you for your love revealed and experienced through it, and ask that we might in return learn to love you and all that speaks of you. We think of the natural world. We think of the people of the world. Especially today, we think of the Bible and those involved in opening it up as a revelation of you through translation and distribution throughout the world. Come, breathe from the four winds. Breathe life into our prayers. We look, we look at the world and notice the people who care for it. We see their struggle to protect and nurture. We thank you for them and ask for strength for their hands and hearts. We think of farmers, foresters, gardeners and environmentalists. We think of health and care workers and those who teach and those who lead. Especially today, we think of those who teach and interpret the Bible in order to nurture and encourage others. Come, Come breathe the four winds. winds. Breathe, Breathe life, life into, into our, our prayers. We look at the world and see where harm is being done. We long for repentance and restoration, that your will be done on earth as in heaven. We think of places impacted by pollution and overconsumption of natural resources. We think of places impacted by war, violence and oppressive governments. Especially today, we think of the harm caused by the misunderstanding or abuse of the Bible, where division is preached rather than reconciliation. Come, breath from the four winds, breathe life into our prayers. We look at the world and grieve with all who have lost someone or something dear. We seek your peace, comfort and joy. We think of the mass extinction of plant and animal species. We think of those affected by loss of health or life, of those who have lost homes or employment. Especially today, we think of those experiencing persecution or loss of freedom because of owning or distributing the Bible. Come. Breathe from the four winds, breathe life into our prayers. We look at the world and pray, thy will be done. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. The word of life, which was from the beginning. That which we heard, which we saw with our eyes, and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The, the word of life, which was from the beginning, beginning we, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. We pray together the Lord's Prayer in the contemporary version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this online service today. So go now in peace, knowing that you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>